Okay, welcome back for another game development in-depth topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about steering behaviors again. Uh, this is part two. Uh, we're going to talk about the wander behavior, how you can make an agent, a sprite, a mob, wander around in a somewhat random fashion. Um, if you haven't watched part one of the series before, please do that first. Uh, I'll put a link below here. Um, because we're going to build on some of the stuff that we explained in the first video and it will definitely be less confusing if you do that. So we're starting again with our standard sprite that just spawns and moves in a straight line in a random direction. And what I want this sprite to do now is instead of seeking the mouse like we did in the previous video, I want it to just wander randomly around the screen. And so one way we could do that is we could take our seek function that we described in the last video and we could just pick a random target. So we could add to our sprite here that we're going to pick a random target. And that target needs to be somewhere, uh, a random spot on the screen. So maybe between the width and the y will be zero and height, zero and no height. So we're going to pick a random spot on the screen to be our target. And then we're just going to have that target move around, right? So we're going to jump around to different locations, but I don't want to do it every frame because that's going to be too fast. So we're going to keep track of when the last time we switched the target was and just measure the time to the next one. So let's make our function called wander. And so what this is going to do is we're going to check what time it is. And if um, it's been long enough, Let's do, um, we'll do half a second, okay? Then last target equals now, and we pick another new random target. So I'll just grab this, right? And we'll duplicate that there. And then since we have a new target, we can just seek that target. Right, so now we're going to use our seek function we made before, and instead of seeking the mouse, we're going to seek that random target that we just spawned on the screen. And so in our update, all we have to do is just set acceleration to wander. And then we'll wander in a random direction. Okay, now to try this out, we're going to Oops, self dot seek. We're just going to run this program. It's going to right, and we're going to pick every 500 milliseconds. We're going to pick a new target and seek towards that target. Now I have put in the draw vectors again so that we can see what's going on when we run it. So there is our wandering sprite, and if I turn on the vectors, you can see that. Well, cyan dot is our random spot that we're picking, and we just steer towards it whenever it changes. And that's fine, but it does look kind of robotic and artificial. There's a lot of really sudden direction changes, and it doesn't really look like a person wandering around. And so we could look at a better way of doing the wandering behavior. And this is a much more sophisticated way of doing it. And it may seem more complicated at first, but it's actually really simple to implement. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you can tune the wandering behavior. So let's look at a diagram. So just to refresh your memory, when we did our seek behavior, we had our, we had our sprites velocity, and then we 
calculated what our desired velocity was, and then the steering force is some vector pushing us in that direction. Well, for the wandering, what we want to do is we want to imagine a circle. Imagine a circle that's some distance ahead of the player in the direction of their velocity. And then we pick a random spot on the circumference of that circle. And that becomes our target. So our desired vector points towards that. And so our steering force is going to pull us towards that desired target. And if we change this random spot on the circle, every frame of the animation, we just keep picking a new one every time, then sometimes the target will be, you know, the, the difference between the velocity and the desired will be big, sometimes it will be small. So we'll make small turns, sometimes big turns, sometimes. And what this allows you to do is tune it by setting these three variables. You can change how big you decide to make the circle. You can change how far ahead that circle is. And then, of course, just like before, you can adjust the steering force to say how fast the sprite will adjust its velocity. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to implement that. So I'm going to define... I'm going to call this Wander Improved so that we can keep the old one there so you can compare the two uh, when you want to. Okay, so first we need to pick um, where our circle position is going to be. Okay, and actually let's go up here and set some of these variables. So we're going to have our, we're going to call it the wander ring. We're going to set the distance and let's set that to 200 pixels ahead of the player. And then we're going to have the wander uh, ring radius. And this is going to be how big that ring is. Let's set that to 50. OK, so now we can go down here and we can say that our circle of position, um, where do we want to go? Our circle position is going to be whatever our player's position is plus our velocity which we're going to normalize so that it's a length of 1 times the wandering distance. Right, so the center of the circle is going to be some distance ahead of our player that we set in the wandering distance. And then our target is going to be that position plus some uh, vector pointing from the center of the circle to its uh, to its edge, right? So that means we want it to be the length of this to be the radius, and we're going to just rotate it in a random direction, or by a random angle. All right, so we know that this vector will be a length, the length will be equal to the radius of the, of the circle that we chose, and it'll just be pointing in a random direction. And that's going to be our target on the edge of the circle. And I'm going to just say, find out the seek, self.seek, that target. OK, and that's all we need to do. But just for the purposes of drawing the vector, um, I'm going to call this the dis placement, okay, just so that we have something to uh, be able to draw on the screen. So we don't need this at all for this to work, okay? But I am going to go down here and I'm going to replace the drawing of that target circle with, we're going to draw the, the actual ring and the displacement line so we can see what it looks like. So now we just need to say here, instead of doing wander, do wander improved. Now when we run, you see we're not moving around so randomly, right? We're only wandering a little bit. And if we turn on the vectors, you can see there's the ring being drawn that distance ahead of the player. And so the desired velocity is just fluctuating around by some plus or minus amount based on how, ring, how big that ring is.
and that looks pretty nice. And so this is only wandering a little bit, right? And we can also adjust some of these variables. Like for example, if I wanted my steering force to be bigger, and I can also increase the radius of the ring, then we have a bigger circle that we're going to look at. And now the wandering is going to look like this. So you see we have a much bigger circle, <clears throat> so those new dis uh, the new desired vectors can be spread out much further. And then we also have the ring being much closer relative to its size. And so we get more uh, we get more turning happening. And so depending on what your desired result is, how you want this wandering behavior to look, you can set those variables differently and you'll get very different results. But you'll never get that um, kind of sudden turn on a dime, just reverse and just turn around and go back like the like the mob forgot something um, that you got when you just picked random targets. So that's the wander behavior. So hopefully you're starting to see the the power of these behaviors. You know, this seek behavior is a very useful one to use um, on its own, but also we used it to build up our our wandering behavior by uh, by intelligently picking a target and then just using that seek function again. And what you'll find as we go into and start exploring some other behaviors is that it's while these behaviors are strong on them on their own, um, the real power comes when you start combining them together. And uh, and we'll explore that as well, how you can get some really amazing um, intelligent seeming behavior out of your your AI agents just by combining simple little things like this. I mean, look at these functions. There's four lines of code and there's five lines of code here. Um, they're not very complicated, uh, but they give you really nice, complicated seeming effects. All right, thanks for watching. Um, please hit like on the video below and subscribe for the next one, and I will see you in part three.